Well, welcome back to another episode of Sexy Marriage Radio. Alongside my wife, Pam. And live here at the Sexy Marriage Radio Getaway. Give it up. Where we're on day, what day is it? Three. Day three. Thank you. <laughs> Last day. Last day of the getaway in 2024. And uh, I've been having a blast. I hope everybody else has too. But this has been this has been so much fun. And the chance to be on the mic with you each and every week, babe, is so much fun. I love it too. Uh, and so we're trying to have honest, straightforward conversations about what goes on in married life and in sex. And we want to hear from you on what might be going on. And so you can let us know at feedback at sexymarriageradio.com or at uh, call our voicemail line 214-702-9565. And we get a chance to interact with the nation that way. And also to those of you that are in the audience, if you're not on the platform, you need to be joining the platform because there's really good conversations that happen there. And also if you're listening and you're not on the platform, you need to be on the platform of the nation, which is my.smr.fm. It's where you can join us. So, so glad that you guys are here. And coming up today on the regular version is a couple of uh, a voicemail and an email that have come in. And so you better be on your A game, babe. I'm, I'm ready to answer all the okay. questions. She's got them all. And, so, and then on the extended content today, which is deeper, longer, and there are no ads, you can subscribe at smr.fm forward slash academy. Again, I don't know what, the academy, what that's going to be yet. So it's a listen to find out if you're academy members. Now it's kind of exciting. You don't know what's coming, right? <laughs> Uh, no? Okay. And it's not exciting to them. So maybe hey. it's not exciting to everybody else. All but right. We'll figure it out. That's coming up right after this. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Perhaps you're like Pam and I and 2024 is just going by so quickly. And so when you look back at the year thus far, what are some things you're really proud of? And is there still some things you want to accomplish? Well, when life gets going really, really fast, it's important to take a moment to celebrate your wins, consolidate some gains, but it's also important to make adjustments for the rest of the year. And this is where therapy can help you take stock of your progress and set good goals for the next six months. Pam and I have used therapy off and on throughout our lives, and we have said before and will continue to say we would not be where we are without the help of some good therapists. So whether you're looking for therapy as a couple or for your own individual goals or your own struggles and overcoming all that life can throw at you, it's great to learn the coping skills and how to set boundaries and how to create the best versions of ourselves. Therapy isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. It's also for every one of us because we all can benefit. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and it's suited to your schedule. Fill out a quick, brief questionnaire and get matched to a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time with no charge. So take a moment and visit betterhelp.com SMR, and you get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com SMR. Hi, Corey and Tam. This is Mike and Tam from uh, Northeast Ohio. Uh, we've been listening to your show and been following you on the extended versions uh, for about the last year. Um, we've been binge listening from the start of your show and keeping up every week to the more current ones. I just came across the 500th episode and uh, was hearing some of the feedback from people that were calling in and just praising the work that you and Pam have done over the years and the help that so many people have got, and we want to just, you know, resonate saying the same thing. Um, we just so appreciate the work that you and Pam are doing and how you're reaching out um, to the Christian, not just the Christian community, but to anybody that hears. Um, I just wanted to mention this, and this is, uh, I, I haven't heard anybody else discuss this, but one of the after effects or one of the the benefits of us listening to you and, and taking on uh, much of the advice that we've heard for the last year, um, it's improved our sex life tremendously. We've been married 41 years, go out 42 years coming up. Fantastic sex life. Never had a downtime in all the 42 years other than, you know, a pregnancy time or after uh, one of our two children were born but never had like weeks or months of downtime. It's just been consistent and fantastic. But after listening to uh, to your podcast, 
it's just opened up a whole new world uh, in our sex life and in our marriage. Our communication about sex was non-existent. We, we just had sex, enjoyed each other, and thought it was really great. Now with the more open communication and actually talking about our desires, talking about things that we like or even things we don't like, it's just opened up a whole new world to us. Um, in that, here's the, here's the sidebar that I didn't expect. We don't fight any longer. We no longer fight. We get along so well. We know each other more intimately, more deeply. And I just, I haven't heard this benefit or I haven't heard anybody else talk about this. I'm just wondering what your thoughts on this are. Um, I have some of my own, but I would love to hear some time of why you think that is such a great benefit of having such open communication, and uh, especially when it comes around uh, the issue of sex. Again, thank you and Pam so much. I uh, love listening to you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mike and Pam, for yes, calling absolutely. in. I appreciate it. But it's one of those that uh, I, I think of. I, rem- I know who this couple is because they've reached out before, and one of his first reach uh, things he sent to us was right after he found us and he he phrased it i think it was so perfect because they had had a vibrant sex life like he alluded to prior already okay but now all of a sudden they started talking about their sex life and so he said we're having the best oral sex we've ever had meaning we're talking about it which that's a great way to look at it right because it's so hard for us actually to talk about this subject with the person we do it with sometimes i well Okay, just side note, most people end up finding the podcast because they've got some sort of issues in the sexual arena. And so I was, I would love to just find out from them, why did they start listening? <laughs> because they're not the norm. Mo- Maybe so. But uh, it also so, it still so could mean cool. they have tension points and such mm-hmm. that are still there. And that's what I would talk about, his question of um, they, the fighting has really dramatically decreased. And I would think the reason well, I he think... he said they don't fight. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with that wording a little bit because I think there's probably still tension there. Maybe. It's just not as noticeable. They can collaborate more. That's what we all talked about this mm-hmm. morning, right? Is they can collaborate about it. doesn't mean the tension's not there. We just don't add drama to our dilemma. And I, I think that's a key word there, the drama that comes to it. Because mm-hmm. if we collaborate together to come to solutions we understand when our spouse normally would have some sort of tense situation or we would disagree on how to handle something but when you're in this boat and you're communicating more and being real and 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 discussing your own meaning behind what a situation is the the disagreements aren't fights they right. don't have to right. be. They're just disagreements. Yeah. Right. And we can both be grown ups and figure out how to manage that. Yeah. And so it, you, you don't have to use the word fight. It's not a word fight. It's, eh, we just had some things we had to work through, but mm-hmm. it's not like it blew up. And I think there's also an element of when you start to recognize a more profound level of bringing your sex life and your sexuality to marriage, you recognize the depth of what you also have. So the fights aren't as threatening because we have this foundation too that we're still can kind of fall back on and go, yep, I rem- oh yeah, I remember that. And it's, so it's like it brings to bear, because most of the time I think what, what exacerbates and intensifies most of our fights in marriage is they are incredibly threatening about what future could be. But if I got this undercurrent of, wait, but we got this. We've created all of this, too, with each, with each other. And, well, now, yeah, this is a tension point, but we'll figure it out. And I think that's a good point. Even threatening about what the future may be doesn't necessarily mean, are we going to be together? It just means, are you threatening, or do I feel threatened by comfort levels that I'm used to having or, or by what I know you may want or not want mm-hmm. or speculate mm-hmm. you want or mm-hmm. right and I have to fulfill it but if you actually start talking about our sex life this is why sex is such a fabulous language to look through the lens of how you do sex is how you do life and how you do life is how you do sex when we can talk about re- exposing that parts of our lives we get to where we can have a 
understanding of, yes, I'm letting you see behind the curtain in me, but I'm also not expecting you to fulfill all of that. I'm just letting you experience it. And that's a big difference. Yeah. Because sometimes when we share a fantasy, it's an element of, I don't know if I actually want to do this, but it feels refreshing to share it. <laughs> yeah, kind <laughs> and of fun. see. Maybe they'll be interested Maybe, in it. Maybe, but also it could just be, you know what? I had this thought. I mean, I, this is not at all a fantasy world in the sexual arena, but I have times in my life and I've recognized when it comes to regressions, which those of you in the audience understand what I'm talking about. If you listened, you missed out on some of the content we just went through over the weekend. Um, I have times where I've got this burning, bubbling thing going on in me and I'll be standing in public and I have this, it's not a desire, but it's more of a thought and an intrigue of, I just want to punch that guy. I don't even know him, but I just want to punch him. Because it's just something going on. Well, that's kind of like a fan. I got several guys nodding their head. And women, Seriously, too. Seriously, that's a thing? You don't have this? I don't have that. Well, I don't even know who you are anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's I want to drive people off the road on the okay. highway. Okay, same thing. Yeah? Same okay. thing. Okay, but that's it's this element. That's because they did something, not because they're just standing there. I'm just saying. I don't even want to go down that this road. This is dark. Um, <laughs> It is dark. Absolutely, it's dark. But that's the component of how we have categorized that fantasy side of us, that deeper part of us that's politically incorrect, and we don't let anybody see it. And when I start to let my spouse see it, of course I'm going to feel closer and deeper, and what goes on isn't going to be as threatening. Because maybe they capture me, and I'm looking at my wife like... (laughs) I'm not quite sure. I feel how to so read much her. deeper with you now, knowing you, you do, want to punch people. Because I like to people. punch somebody yeah. sometimes. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. just a feeling. It's just a desire. It's not something I've done, but but it's an element of recognizing that's a component of us that's a little unsavory, a little uncertain, sure. a little alluring or erotic or novel. That a lot of times when that gets exposed, it's like, oh, I didn't want to know that. But when I can settle myself and create room for both of us because we're talking about it, of course the other things that happen in life are minimized in severity. Sure. They're still there, but we're not losing our mind over it. It's more collaborative. It's more, nope, let's move forward. And so before I go any deeper, let's move on to the next question. Deal. Okay? I might have to punch somebody. Um, (laughs) This is an email that came in from a husband. My wife and I are Christian. We married in our 50s. We waited until marriage for sex. Thus, I didn't know the whole picture, so to speak. When the package was opened, I realized I was disappointed. She does not fit my arousal template at all. I like curvy, big, beautiful women, and she had a mastectomy before marriage, but I thought I could overlook it. I'm not looking at porn, but I have very little arousal with her. She has a hunch that this is the case, I suspect, and I recognize and recognized my letdown on the honeymoon, and we both seemed to realize this, but didn't talk about it. In hindsight, when we dated, there was a feeling in my gut that this was gonna be an issue. I was afraid as a Christian to ask her to perhaps take her clothes off to check her out before marriage. Perhaps I should have. I married her, but I believe, I married her, I believe, because she was a safe and mature Christian woman, but I wasn't highly aroused by her physically, near as much as I, I should have been. Is there any way to change my arousal template? On different podcasts, I heard you mention mourning, mention mourning and grieving what you will never have. My wife will never have the curv- never be the curvy woman that I like. How can I change to love her and forget about what I will never have with her? Is it burned into my DNA preferences or can it be changed? How can I change my arousal template to be aroused by my wife? Is there any hopes, suggestions that you got? I'm all ears because I'm confident many other couples may struggle with this as well. Yeah, this is a tough one because the biggest thing right off the bat, he looks back at this and realizes, I think she knows this is an issue too, but they have still not spoken about it. She knows. Absolutely. She'll know. Yeah. But I'm curious, why not speak about it? What keeps that from being brought out into the open? Well, the normal reason you don't bring things up, you don't want... To hurt their feelings. Okay, so I'll just read the fact that her feelings are hurt. Well, we lie to <laughs> ourselves. Right, we lie to right. ourselves to think that if we don't say it, yeah. they won't know it. Yeah. It's not as painful if I haven't vocalized it. 
despite the fact that they already know. Right. Um, yeah, what's interesting to me in this, you're crushed by this, aren't you? I'm crushed. Yeah, and, and it is a crushing thing. For both of them, but yep. I, I, I mean, my initial reaction is, well, it's not very kind. There's common sense here. If you have something you're attracted to, you knew all the things behind what she had going on. If this was going to be something for you, how, right? But how this, do you is, not okay, know? this is that element of I'm curious where the scripts came from of what is attractive. I think there is an element where he talks about my DNA preferences. I think that's a bit severe. Uh, I think there's an element of we are. Our allure, our likes, our tastes, they do evolve. There's some consistency through it, but they do evolve. And I'm going to use myself as a case study in that because who you are now is so much more attractive than who you were when we first met. And there's, there's a consistency of you, but you have changed and evolved from two kids, life, loss of a father you know there's things that have gone on that make a whole different picture that and were, you're and you're referring to those as physical changes or you're referring to those the whole as, story right. the whole story exactly. because again the script the the script i'm hearing from him is it's a physical thing but yet he chose her because she was a safe mature christian woman which there are a lot of us that choose things because it makes sense in the moment. And then I hold my partner responsible for my choice because they're not what I wanted, but I don't re- take on myself to realize, wait, I chose this. Yeah. So to him, he's asking the wrong question, in my opinion, of how do I change my arousal template is the wrong question. The better question is, how do I deal with the spouse I've got? How do I use her and the whole of her because there's something in there that's appealing. There's something in there that was maybe not alluring, but there's something of depth and meaning there. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's not the, the full-on instant erection. Wow, that's it. Perfect. But it still can be, no, look at what we create. Look at, what, look at who she is. Look at what she's capable of. Look at what she's been through. Because it's a more mature way of looking at life. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't know about other any other fellows in here but um i at where i am in my life right now at 53 uh if something if 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 we weren't if something happened to you and all of a sudden i was going to get in another relationship i want a woman that's been through some life right that there's there's some struggle that's happened and she's come through it because this wife sounds like she's had a mastectomy that's that's something. She's that lived cancer, through some struggle. There's, there's yeah. been something to make a choice of. I'm going to alter my body because of a disease or a choice to avoid the potential of a disease because that could be a component if you have the genetic gene mm-hmm. that makes you predisposed to uh, breast cancer. Mm-hmm. But it's recognizing there's a depth there of who they are as a person that matters so much more than the skin embodying that person and the shape Absolutely, absolutely. Because here's the corollary. I'm going to keep going because I know you might have a thought, but I'm going to keep going. No, go, go. Because the question I have is for him, what is it about the persona of a big, beautiful woman that speaks to him? Because it can't always just be she's a big, curvy woman. There's also got to be some meaning attached to that. An attitude that goes with it. There you go. That's what what I'm curious about. Because the society portrays Big, big, beautiful women a lot of times as confidence. Yeah. And it draws the eye because of how they carry themselves. Well, let me let you in on a little secret, dude. A lot of women are that. I'm seeing heads nod from the fellows and the wives in here. That there's a lot of women are confident. It's just not portrayed in that one little avenue. Right. So instead, you look at what is it about your wife that faced whatever it is she's had to face that's confident, that's bold, Mm -hmm. that takes life by the horns Mm -hmm. and will move things forward? Because that's, that's the better question of who is she underneath it all? 
there's a meaning there that's so, so worth exploring and understanding. I think he's got to unpack a lot of things within himself. If, 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 if I've typically found that curvy person to arouse me physically, that's not what I chose to marry. Why do I have this difference? There was something about her that was appealing. Maybe yeah. it's just the safety. Which and happens a lot. I mean, I've had a lot of different clients over the years that they're frustrated that I don't have arousal, but that's not what I chose them for. And so now I'm fighting this battle of I'm blaming my spouse for my choice. So I got a lot of growing up to do if yes. that's what I did. Absolutely. But the, the, here's the bigger question I have for him, I guess, after as we kind of land it, is she... He's even stating she's aware, most likely. You're saying she's going to be aware. Yeah. Yet he's probably, I'm guessing, maybe acting like it's not a big deal. Acting like I can deal with this. Acting like, you know, he's avoiding yeah. the fact that it's actually there. Which, dude, that's cruel. I wonder if he realizes how unappealing he is to her when he does that. Okay. He can't be that attractive when he's doing that. Right, because he won't step up and deal with what's right in front of him. Yeah. And yes, it's going to create a different depth of uh, potential pain and hardship and struggle. But the difference becomes if you will air it, like you, they picked up on it on the honeymoon. And if they'll air it, it becomes the possibility of having clean pain. Right now they have dirty pain going on over and over and over. Mm-hmm. Of I'm working on, I, uh, you know, it, it's what you tell yourself rather than, no, no, the clean pain is I made this choice. It's wreaking havoc in ways I was not prepared for. I'm second guessing my choice. But again, dude, that has nothing to do with her yet still. <laughs> That's taking on you. Right. And then you bring it forward to her about your wrestle, about your struggle, about what's really going on so that she gets cued in on that's what's really going on because it's not about, well, maybe I just need to learn how to be a big, beautiful woman because that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's, that's not who she is. Yeah. And so it's recognizing how does, she, how does he learn to deal with the spouse he has, not the spouse he wished he had. And I hate the phraseology. Of which one? What I just said? or Big, what? beautiful woman. Big, beautiful woman. Why? Do, you, because it's a You set, said that's not who she is. It's a subset. She's beautiful. Well, Thank you. But it's a subsect. It's a characteristic in the world today. And that's also why he threw in the aspect of I'm not looking at porn because that's a subsect in the porn world of big, beautiful women where you can seek out a whole thread of it. Oh, okay. 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 And so that's an aspect of looking deeper into the meaning of it, not the, not the person and the characteristics of their, of their physique. Okay. Look at who they are because my hunch is she has that too. Her body just isn't the same as what his persona thinks is alluring. And if he can wrestle with that, maybe he starts to get a chance to see what I've got in front of me is really worth being with and worth pursuing. And if it's not, at least you're wrestling with the right answer, right question. And then you figure out what you need to do with it from there. Well, this is always fun to do this in front of an audience, even when it's a deeper one, uh, because it's... you. It, it's, these are the rough things that we face in life, man. These are, these are the things that are tough to navigate and tough to realize that we all face in various ways because nothing prepares us for marriage but marriage. And kudos to him, at least, of maybe I should have asked beforehand. Yeah, it still wouldn't have caused, solved your dilemma, right, of being able to. We don't know the whole picture of what we're marrying until we're in it. That's just the reality of marriage. Yeah. And so this has been Sexy Marriage Radio. If we left something undone, let us know, 214-702-9565 or feedback at sexymarriageradio.com. And so thanks for taking a little bit of time out to spend it with us. And thank you for extending your lunch break to hang with us, those of you here in the audience. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>